Now it's easy to blame Wasa as soon as a car that you're in goes into a pothole or crosses over a stretch of bad road. But is it really Wasa to blame? And what are they doing to repair their reputation and the roads that they've been digging up for so very long? We joined Wasa on a road repairing project here in Woodbrook to find out what their perspective is and what can we look forward to. Wasa's acting CEO is acknowledging his company's part to play in your traveling trauma, but Alan Poon King also assures that Wasa is doing its best to make the lives of drivers a bit easier. We are not busy with the restoration of our lives. Uh, and we are working on the work getting, getting the restoration done as it should. Um, it is still a work in progress. Um, so we still have uh, the fully equipped but it is still um, something that we need to, I would say, increase our productivity and, and conservation is a two issue. We have got as high as 2700 and currently we're down around 1500. Wasa's process begins when a sore spot is identified, especially in urban areas. Rehabilitation works on underground pipelines are treated, then there's a bit of a wait time before the road is repaved. Within that time, you may have been forced to duck and weave your car in an effort to avoid the damaged road. The good news is, it doesn't take too much time to pave when the work is started, but it costs them a pretty penny. The access into the pipeline, and you have to repair the pipeline, the pipeline material, the aggregate to come back up to grade, and then the final cut things. They all, all costly, costly items. So you're looking at thousands of dollars being spent on repair. So a particular repair have the pipeline component, and then the others. It runs into thousands of dollars for each one. For the road restoration, we have a little more within our that's why we focus on trying to get this part of the job improved upon and we move towards that to get the picture. We, we are aware of the issue that we cause to the traffic problem. And I'm going to say we are working towards addressing that. Uh, we continue to work with the local government agencies and the country of this. There is the possibility of redress for people like Marilyn Narine, who we featured in our first installment. Marilyn lost her woodland home due to a wasa line which caused the earth to keep shifting. Poon King says he's aware of the case, but procedure needs to be followed. We are aware that, that, um, that water is destructive. So that if we do have a way, we know that it's going to arise. Um, and it's not that, that, that we can turn a blind eye to say we have damaged property. When it's justified, and there's a process to go through where the homeowners can be compensated if, if they all hope isn't lost, but it'll still be a while before you can drive on the nation's roads without being greeted by a pothole. In our final installment, we'll discuss the importance of the government's stakeholders and finally answer the age-old question of the role the Pitch Lake plays in Trinidad and Tobago's roads.